Right, so similar to Arc, Arc Map, Arc Pro, uh, there, there's a, a raster calculator function built into QGIS, and it actually works fairly similar to uh, the raster calculator built into the Spatial Analyst extension. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple examples of how to use the uh, use this uh, use the raster calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go to raster raster calculator, and we're going to do some calculations. So uh, first off, there, this nomenclature here's how you under like represent or here's what it means. <laughs> so the first part here is the layer name. And then at one basically means band one, so that's the way you can differentiate uh, bands in a multi-band raster. These are both just single bands, so there's really nothing to differentiate. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is let's calculate a binary raster from the elevation surface. Specifically, let's just find all elevations that are above, uh, we'll do like uh, 1,200 meters. So I'm going to feed it the elevation. And what we want is values greater than 12, oops, 1200. And I'm going to have this save out to disk. So we'll just call this, um, we'll call it rcalc1. And we'll save it as a TIFF file. You can also change the extent if you want. I think by default it'll just use the layer extent and obviously the layer spatial reference. Um, and it's going to automatically add it to the project. So let's see what that does. So we'll hit OK. And then it r runs it. OK, so we get back this um, binary surface. So 0 is false, 1 is true. Um, so similar to how you what you'd expect if you did this like an ArcGIS. So, um, we'll do palleted, classify, and then we can look at the, you know, distribution here. So these are our lower than the specified height, and then the red there is higher than the specified height. All right, so that's an example of doing a reclass um, or a binary output. Uh, the DEM, or sorry, the land cover, we could do something similar with it. So, for example, we could try to extract out values that are assigned to a certain code or class. So, for example, we wanted all the deciduous forest. We could do this is equal to the code for deciduous forest, which is 41. And we'll just call this rc2.tiff. And run that. Oh, it's underneath here. Here we go. So every, all the errors in white there were true or deciduous forest, and the errors in black are false or not deciduous forest. And again, we could go in there and change the symbology if we wanted. Um, so let's say you wanted to have multiple land cover categories or classes. They're pulled out. So we could do more of like a compound expression. So Let's set that up. So just do all forests. So the land cover is equal to oops, 41, or the land cover is equal to 42. Oops, 42, or the land cover is equal to. 43. So it's your deciduous mix in conifer forest. So or that should be, oh, I got two ores in there. No, it'll tell you down here whether your expression is valid or not. Okay, we'll call this rc3.tiff and run that. Okay, there we go. So now we got back all the areas that were both deciduous and conifer forest. All right, so um, let's look at another compound example using the elevation. So uh, let's find things that are below a certain elevation or above a certain elevation. Okay, so we'll do the land cover, or sorry, the elevation is less than, let's see, just do 900, or the elevation is greater than, we'll just do 1300. 
src for dot tiff save and hit OK there there we go so our white areas are either the low or the highs and then the black or the false is in the middle um, it's also possible to do a calculation that involves multiple rasters um, just as a note um, QGIS tends to be less forgiving with issues of things like cell alignment um, and ex extent a number of cell differences between grids um, sometimes everything will work fine, other times it might give you a bit of a headache. Arc's good at just kind of dealing with that in the background, which is good and bad, because sometimes you maybe want to have more control where your cells line up, or they have the exact same extent or whatnot. So if you're having issues with that, one thing you might want to look into is this Align Raster. So this allows you to take, input a set of grids, and then um, make them align in terms of the cell size, the, the spatial extent, and whatnot. Um, we're not going to do that here, but just as a side note, that might be useful if you're running into alignment issues. OK, so we'll go back to raster calculator. And let's find all the areas that are above a certain elevation and also um, maybe deciduous forest. We'll do that again. So we could do. Uh, West Virginia elevation. Let's just do uh, let's just do greater than twelve hundred, and land cover is equal to forty one. So it's deciduous forest over twelve hundred. We'll call this R R C. What am I up to? Five dot tiff. And we'll run that. And that seemed to work. So the areas there in white are deciduous forest areas that are above 1,200 meters. You could have done that as kind of like a compound, um, like as separate grids. So you could create grids and like multiply them together, for example. So I'm just going to do that as a final example. So we're gonna again. We'll do something similar. What did I say? I think it was, was it twelve hundred or a thousand? I don't. Know. I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll just do greater than. We'll just twelve hundred, and we'll call that RC six dot tiff. Okay, there's our above twelve hundred, and then we'll get deciduous forest again. Basically, I already did this. I'm just replicating the process all the way through. And we'll call that rc7.tiff. Oops. There's our deciduous forest. And then to get areas that meet both of those criteria, you could go in here and do the multiplication. So 7 uh, times. Six, and that will give you back ones only where it met both criteria. So I think we're up to eight. Uh, tiff probably isn't going to be a lot of deciduous force above that elevation, so we're really not going to get a whole lot. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's an example of doing raster math um, in Arc. Um, or sorry, in QGIS, it's, and again, it's pretty similar to how you would do this in like in Arc.